ओके किसी को नहीं समझ में आ रहा तो बोल देना एक बार मैं भरत का क्वेश्चन एड्रेस कर देता हूँ देखो भरत क्या पूछ रहा है भरत ये पूछ रहा है कि आप ये कह रहे हैं कि आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ मल्टीवेलेट फंक्शन एब्सोल्युटली फाइन क्योंकि हम क्या कह रहे हैं वी कैन से दैट ऑफ फॉर अ सिंगल पॉइंट आई कैन हैव मेनी आर्ग्यूमेंट इज इन इनफैक्ट इन्फाइनेट मेनी इन्फाइनेटली मेनी आर्ग्यूमेंट लेट्स दिस वॉज द केस दिस इज पॉइंट वन कॉम वन भरत वुड से दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट इज फाइव बाई फोर प्रज्ञा वुड कवन से दिस इज टू फाइव प्लस फाइव फोर एंड सोन एंड सो फोर सो आई कैन से एनी बडी कैन गिव मी एन आंसर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर जोन ओके Now what I told restrict this domain. So in what sense restriction मैंने क्रिएट किया आई रिस्ट्रिक्टेड द एंगल्स सो आई रिस्ट्रिक्टेड द एंगल्स फ्रॉम माइनस फाइव टू फाइव सो दिस इज वॉट इज जनरल नोटेशन मतलब जनरली वॉट पील सी इन एनसीआर टी और अदरवाइज ऑल्सो दिस इज द जनरल नोटेशन ओके सो इफ इफ यू सी द बुक ऑफ एनसीआर टी ऑफ अर स्टैंडर्ड इलेवन वेर कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर आर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सो वॉट यू फाइंड दैट दे हैव रिड्यूस इट टू दिस फैशन देट सेट की ऊपर वाला एंगल्स डिफाइंड फ्रॉम जीरो से टू फाइव एंड नीचे वाले एंगल्स मतलब इफ द पॉइंट्स इज पॉइंट इज इन द लोअर क्वाड्रेंट्स जस्ट गिव मी अ आंसर फ्रॉम माइनस पाई टू जीरो ओके सो इन एंगल सेंस इफ यू विल सी दैट देयर इज अ रिस्ट्रिक्शन देयर इज अ रिस्ट्रिक्शन मतलब यू कैन से जीरो फ्रॉम अबव बट यू कैन नॉट से जीरो फ्रॉम बिलो एंड सॉरी यू कैन से दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्सिस द आर्गुमेंट टू बी पाई Argument to be pi, but you cannot say argument to be minus pi. You cannot approach this uh, point via this, like uh, via this uh, orientation. So this is how they have restricted. Ab uh, Bharat Shah, whatever I do understand from this, say he is saying, can we not define theta p in this fashion? This is what you are asking. Yes, sir. You can do it. No issues. You can do it. No issues about it. So you can as well do this way, this way, any way. But uh, a standard notation, what we see from NCERTs or what we see from books, mostly in most books you will find this sort of theta p defined. So if at all exam me aaye ki theta p if I am defining from this, so this is also principal branch. So here what you, what has been done here what has been instructed ki you have to go from zero se leke two pi, but you cannot cross this thing. So in order to not cross this, after one revolution you cannot. Say that this point had argument zero, and again I came back to the same point. I had argument two pi. So in my mind, I have actually created a branch cut here. Here I have created a branch cut here. Are you getting my point? So just say you rotated from here to here, and now you cannot cross cross this. So what was said? That you just move from lower and lower uh, quadrants in an uh, sorry counter uh, sorry clockwise direction. So the clockwise orientation of the angle is in negative. so this is how they define and if i if you go by bharat's way what he is saying you go along this angle you keep on increasing keep on increasing keep on increasing come back to the point but you don't say that this the, the argument of this point is 2 pi you would say the argument is zero only because now you are not supposed to cross this since you are not supposed to cross this so you have actually considered a branch cut only here ek tarike se implicitly if i can say that there is a branch cut in the very definition of it are you getting my point in proper sense branch cut is to remove the axis so that is that is why i am not using the exact term but actually restriction is the term that i am using i have restricted the angles so implicitly uh, you can say that uh, you cannot cross this after one complete circulation am i clear to you bharat samajh mein aaya beta yes and i hope uh, i made sense ओके सो अब देखो अब हम जहां पे फंसे हुए थोड़ा सा मेरे को एक रिकैप्चुलेट uh, करने दो स्टैंडर्ड इलेवन की चीजें नाउ यू जस्ट गिव मी व्हाट विल बी द प्रिंसिपल आर्गुमेंट ऑफ दिस पॉइंट सो हाउ टू फाइंड प्रिंसिपल आर्गुमेंट वन कॉमा वन आप कुछ मत करो जस्ट गिव मी द वैल्यू ऑफ टेन इन वर्स मॉड ऑफ वाई बैक्स मॉड ऑफ वाई बैक्स आई एम सींग मॉड ऑफ वाई बैक्स दिस आई विल से थीटा ओके दिस इज अ प्रिस्क्रिप्शन दैट आई एम राइटिंग फॉर फाइंडिंग द प्रिंसिपल आर्ग्यूमेंट प्रॉब्ली यू माइट है यू माइट है You might be not knowing it or probably forgotten. So that is why I'm doing. You just have to find me this theta is equal to tan inverse mod of y by x. If you are in the first quadrant, your principal argument is theta only. Okay. If you are in the second quadrant, your theta is pi minus theta. The uh, theta p is pi minus theta. Theta is remains to be this. If you are in the third quadrant, the principal argument is minus pi plus theta. And if you are in the fourth quadrant, your theta p is minus theta. Are you getting my point? So this will ensure that your theta p remains in this domain. 
So this is why I'm writing in this fashion. Okay. If had you be, had you uh, went through the uh, Bharat formulation, then your angle would have been from zero, so like a two pi, and you cannot include two pi in that sense. So implicitly, uh, he's saying that you do, you are not supposed to cross this barrier. Implicitly, I'm saying you're not supposed to cross this barrier. So what I'm saying, you just cover the angles on the upper quadrant from zero to two pi, and lower since you're not supposed to cross this. So I'm saying I'm giving you a prescription. Just cover these angles from in the in the clockwise orientation so uh, this is a kind of restriction that we are placing so i'm used to this so i'm writing this you may also go for this there are uh, there is no such ambiguity only point is the argument would differ uh, uh, in uh, values otherwise uh, the answer to things is same you you go from this way the argument will be single value so for every point you will have a single argument and similarly, if I go here, for every point, there will be a single argument. Now, there will be no two different arguments. So now, come back to the class 11. If I'm saying 1, comma 1, what will be the argument? Principal argument? Who will tell you? Bheem Singh will tell you? Who will tell you? Tan inverse 1 by 1. Tan inverse 1. Tan inverse 1, how much is it? 5 by 4. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, sir. Bheem Singh will tell you. Now, what is this principal argument? कौन सा कोऑर्डिनेट पहले बोलूं इसका भी सर पाई वाई फोर आया है इसका नहीं नहीं गोली मार दूंगा माइनस वन कॉमा वन ढंग से देख के देखो माइनस वन किस कोऑर्डिनेट पे जाता है थर्ड को मैं गोली मार दूंगा सेकंड सेकंड कोऑर्डिनेट पर माइनस वन कॉमा वन वाई तो पॉजिटिव है एक्स नेगेटिव है तो आप सेकंड Pi minus pi by 4 means minus 1 comma 1 ka argument is 3 pi by 4. Are you oh. getting my point? Oh, okay. Yes, so now, one value will come. There is no other value. So now, I can give you an answer in minus pi and pi. Ke answer dena. You are supposed to give me answers in only this way. Okay. In the third quadrant, if I am saying minus 1 comma 1, the answer will be what? Minus 3 pi by 4. And the fourth quadrant, if I am saying minus sorry, 1 comma minus 1, what will be the principal argument? Minus pi by 4. Yes or no? 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 Okay, yes. so this is standard 11 ki book. Mein mil Tumko NCRT freely available and download kar lena. Ek do exercises ki dekh lo. You will be able to get koi dikkat wali baat nahi. Iske liye koi bahut zyada badi books padhne ki koi zarurat nahi. Theek hai? So ab hum discussion karte hain. So LNZ hamara kya tha? Dekho LNZ ka mod plus iota argument of Z ye yaad karo yahi tha. Aur maine abhi bhi bola ki argument of Z to kya hota hai? Multivalued function hota hai. To what I can write? Multivalued function mein assign kisi tha isko? Iota 2n pi Plus theta p principal argument ले लो और उसमें two n pi कर दो हर बार तुम उसी point पे आ जाओगे let's say अभी यहाँ पे थे pi by four वापस घूम के भी तो यहीं पे आ जाओगे तो argument तो multi valued होता है ना principal argument single valued होता है ये argument है इसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि ln z को जब मैं express कर रहा हूँ I ln z for a single point can give me how many values n किसको belong कर रहा है यहाँ पे n किसको belong कर रहा है if I take positive बोला अगर मैं positive sense में ही चलू so here I can write n belongs to natural. And if I will take negative angles also, so that will be it. But in any case, understand my point. For a single value of z, how many values? Let's say 1, 1. Let's say 1, 1. So ln 1, 1. So ln 1, 1. What will be here? What will be here? What will be here? What will be ln root 2. What is mod z? 1, 1. Root 1 square plus root 1 square root 2 plus iota 2n pi. And the principal argument is 1 comma 1. Kabhi nikala, pi by 4. So 1 comma 1 I have Values are ln root 2 plus 2 n pi. How many values are there? Infinitely many values are there. Because n belongs to natural. This means, please do write, ln z is an infinitely multi-value function. How many branches will be? Infinitely many branches will be. Yes or no? बात समझ में आई? Yes sir. Understood? 
हालांकि पीपल इन मैथमेटिक्स तुम्हें ऐसे नहीं करना यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इन द नोशन ऑफ रीमैन सर्कस फॉर विच आई मेक अपरेट लेक्चर प्रॉब्लम फिजिक्स पीपल मे ऑल्सो सी बट अंडरस्टैंड माई पॉइंट की एल एन जेड इज एन इन्फाइनाइटली मल्टी वैल्यू फॉर्चर ये समझ में बात in fact what Gee, you find is, what you'll find is ki if i make a circulation around z equal to 0 and let's say if i have a, i'm at a point r comma theta if i enclose uh, origin into the circulation okay and if i am considering the function fz is equal to ln z what i'm finding is after one complete revolution i'll come back to the same point so initially the ln z was equals to ln mod z plus iota theta After one complete revolution, it will become ln mod z plus iota two pi plus theta, because see this particular point, the argument will become two pi plus theta, and here you see that ln z definition is ln mod z plus iota argument of z. So in this, after one complete revolution, I'll come back to the point two pi plus theta. I, my argument uh, gets becomes two pi plus theta. After uh, another revolution, my argument will become four pi plus theta. And so on and so forth. So what I am finding, so if I make any circulation around point z equal to zero, my log z behaves in a multi-valued. Uh, my log z attains multi-valued, uh, attains multiple values for point A. That implies z equal to zero is a branch point for L and Z. Yes or no? So yah pro z raised to power one by two. Z raised to power one by two के branch point क्या था? Z equal to zero. L and Z का branch point भी क्या है? Z equal to zero. So understand अभी तक हमने तीन functions पढ़े हैं. Z raised to power p by q is a uh, is a uh, is a multi-valued function with q branches. Okay, this is a multi-valued function. Remember this. Also understand L and Z is also a multiple-valued function with infinitely many branches. Okay, यहाँ तक बात समझ में आई? यस सर इनफैक्ट तुम ये देखोगे एक चीज बात समझने की कोशिश करो कि लेट्स से व्हेन आई वाज डूइंग z रेस्ट टू पावर 1 बाय 2 आई वाज गेटिंग टू ब्रांचेस एंड बियॉन्ड इट आई फाउंड दैट द फंक्शन रिजुविनेटेड रिजुविनेटेड व्हाट आई डू आई मीन लेट्स से इफ आई एम सेइंग दिस वाज माय पॉइंट ए एंड दिस इज एंगल r कॉमा थीटा सॉरी दिस इज अ पॉइंट r कॉमा थीटा आफ्टर वन कंप्लीट रिवॉल्यूशन आई केम बैक टू r theta plus 2 pi so here i had value as root over r e raised to power iota theta by 2 the function fz is equal to z raised to power alpha i am discussing and here the value was minus root over r e raised to power iota theta by 2 and if i go back again doing the same another revolution so again i will get back to this initial values so after a while i find that my function rejuvenated and before it i had two branches so this is how you say when i say My fun, uh, z raised to power one by two has two branches, and similarly, if I say z raised to power one by three, so remember theta, p plus plus two pi, and theta plus four pi yielded me three different values, but theta plus six pi yielded me the very same value which I had at theta. Okay, so what can you say if I write z raised to power some alpha, where alpha belongs to some irrational values? So z raised to power alpha, and if I say alpha is irrational, what would you say? Okay, so this is something that I'm I'm uh, leaving you at as an exercise. You just try to think over, not very mathematically, but just try to make a point. Uh, what can be said about z raised to power alpha if alpha belongs to irrational values, not rational? Rational value, तुमने लिख दी. P by Q अगर होगा, then it will be a Q multi-valued function. I also wrote that L and Z happens to be your uh, uh, also happens to be a multi-valued function. In fact, it it is a infinitely multi-valued function with Z with with a singularity uh, with branch point at Z equal to zero. Now I'm asking, what can you say about Z for alpha where alpha belongs to irrational? Mathematics people are supposed to think over it. Probably a critically also could do it. Physics people, I'll give you an answer to this, and you have to remember it. Okay, so. Uh, i would leave it leave this particular thing uh, you just think it uh, think over it and we'll get back to this point okay now let us come back to another point uh, uh so uh, abhi tak humne kya padha abhi tak humne ek cheez padhi hai ki uh, let us understand abhi tak humne kya padha ek function analytic kab kehlayega let's say if i say a function is analytic at point z equal to z not 
if there exists a neighborhood of z equal to z naught where function is where function is differentiable and in fact it is single value so if i am saying that my function is analytic at point z equal to z naught if i am saying my uh, function is analytic at point z equal to z naught then there should exist a neighborhood where function is differentiable as well as single value okay and in two sense uh, why i could say that there is a much distinction between real analysis and complex analysis the acha okay acha one more question you should answer me acha wo main baad mein batata hu lekin just give me an answer to this uh, just uh, let me uh, write it as region r so understand one of the theorems in uh, complex analysis states that if fz is analytic in region r Uh, if fz is analytic in region r then f dash z f double dash z f triple dash z so on and so forth all the higher order derivatives all the higher order derivatives are also analytic i'm not deriving it but i'm just writing it now this is a very 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 powerful statement okay this is a very powerful statement why it is a very powerful statement see if i somehow find if i somehow find that my function is analytic in region let's say r it implies your first derivative exists so what i am saying by this particular theorem i am saying that in this particular region r you can not only say that your f dash exist rather you will say that your f double dash would exist f triple dash would also exist f four dash i mean all the higher order derivatives will start uh, to exist in this particular region r and that gives me a power uh, that gives me an authority to write or expand the function in something called as power series i hope you are aware of it Uh, a Taylor series representation. What does it requires me to do? It requires me to write the derivative of the functions. So if I am saying at z equal to z not my function is analytic, implies all the higher order derivatives will of will start to exist. I am trying to explain why I am doing this. Reason. Reason is one variable analysis. There is nothing in that. One variable calculus. There is nothing in that. You cannot say such things. Let's say if I am giving you an example, x mod x. what you can say about it what you can say about it so does first order derivative exist so x mod x will be equals to x square if x is greater than or equal to 0 it will be equals to minus x square if x is less than 0 yes or no and if i write f dash x f dash x happens to be 2x x greater than or equal to 0 minus 2x if x is less than 0 no issues about it but kindly observe what is f dash x it is 2x when x is positive it is minus 2x if x is negative does it not look like two times modulus of x thoda dhyan se dekho so it clearly says that f dash x is not differentiable f dash x understand f dash x is not differentiable at x equal to 0 because modulus of x is not differentiable at x equal to 0 yaad karo graph bachpan padha hua hai teachers padhate hain this is your 11th standard calculus modulus of x is not differentiable at x equal to 0 if you are not able to get it let me differentiate it second time So if I differentiate it second time, x greater than zero, x less than zero is minus two. So if you go towards the right of zero, your derivative is two. If you go towards the left, your derivative is minus two. Clearly, the right hand derivative is not equal to left hand derivative. Clearly, function f double f double dash x means function derivative ka derivative. So f dash x ka derivative is also here. It implies your function's derivative does not exist at x equal to zero. So in one variable calculus, you had this kind of thing. Uh, in in real analysis you had this kind of thing ki if a first order derivative exists you cannot guarantee the existence of higher order derivatives but in complex analysis this is a freedom given to you i'm not going to derive this theorem i'm just writing it if fz is analytic in region r then all the higher order derivatives are also analytic in that region analytic means f dash z analytic matlab f double dash z would exist f double dash analytic is called f triple dash would exist kyunki f z analytic ka matlab tha f dash exist अब मैं कह रहा हूँ एफ डैश एनालिटिक इट इम्प्लाइज एफ डबल डैश एक्सिस्ट एफ डबल डैश एनालिटिक मींस एफ ट्रिपल डैश एक्सिस्ट सो ऑन सो फॉर्थ सो अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी पावरफुल स्टेटमेंट इफ एफ जेड इज एनालिटिक इन रीजन आर देन एफ डैश जेड एफ डबल डैश जेड एफ ट्रिपल डैश जेड एंड ऑल दोस हायर ऑर्डर टर्म्स 
higher order derivative terms would exist in this region R. And this gives me a power, this gives me an authority to write a power series about z equal to z. Since power series contains the derivative terms only. We'll come to this later, but uh, this is an absolute powerful theorem. So that is why I wanted to write. Are you getting my point till now? Yes, sir. Uh, anybody, any questions till now? If anybody has any question, please do ask. Don't worry about it. Kya lag hai, kaisa lag hai. Uh, hardly matters. Gopal, do you understand, Yes, sir. Pragya, do you understand? Yes, sir. Real analysis mein or complex analysis, mein, one of the very fundamental differences, when you start taking the, uh, the, the definition of differentiability there, if a function is differentiable at a point, you cannot say anything regarding the higher order derivatives. But in complex analysis, if I'm saying my function is analytic in a region R, then all the higher order terms are also analytic in that particular region. That gives me a freedom to write a power series. Okay. So you would find that I wrote on the very first day, sin z as some power series, cos z as some power series. These are analytic functions. These are completely entire functions. Okay. Yes or no? Okay, now let, uh, let me get back to the point about analyticity. So, uh, if you holomorphicity or whatever you wish to like say. So, let us come to the point of uh, domain of holomorphy or you can say domain of analyticity. So, if I was saying my function is analytic in mod z less than infinity, these functions were called as your entire functions or holomorphic functions. But what about z equals to infinity? What if equal to z equals to infinity? What if I say whether my function is analytic at infinity or not? So I, on the very first day, I defined it, uh, defined something called as extended complex plane uh, that included uh, my point at infinity. And uh, if you had uh, my first lecture, and I actually uh, gave you a short idea about stereographic projection, and I told that there exists a single infinity that is the North Pole. In the in, in the case of uh, extended complex plane, you have a single infinity uh, which is joined together at North Pole. So basically, you had an infinity conceptualization there as well. I'm just saying for an extended complex plane, you will include infinity also. And my question is, does uh, the function uh, what all functions become uh, remain to uh, remain analytic at z equal to infinity? Okay, so it it uh, it sh I should shorten I shorten it up to say that uh, there is a, incidentally there is a theorem called as Lively's theorem. Incidentally, there is a theorem called as Lively's theorem, which suggests me, and I'm not going to derive it again because these are all prescribed in mathematics syllabus. And I was yesterday only discussing with uh, uh, discussing that see what what beautiful life we have. Uh, we have to actually grasp all those important concepts from mathematics which actually mathematics people uh, uh, study for almost one semester. So for example, complex analysis is a one semester course in mathematics. Okay. Linear algebra is again one semester course in mathematics. Group theory, again, one semester course. Tensor analysis, again, one or two semester course. Differential equation, partial differential equation, one semester course. Integral transform, again, one semester course. And uh, so on and so forth. You will find that all of these things are shortened up and almost to the same rigor or probably more are put together in something called as mathematical physics. So we are helpless. Sometimes you have to admit it, admit all those things without even knowing how they are derived. But, but this is our uh, limitation. Because if, if I start deriving each one of them, so it will take a lot amount of time. So I'll, I'll suggest you wherever I'll find there is a need of derivation, I'll do that. Otherwise, you just uh, jot them down and uh, just thinking that there are some very important statements. Okay. So uh, in very, very brief or very, in very sort of a less rigor rigorous way, I would say that only a constant function would remain analytic at infinity. This is what Lively's theorem has to say. So what does Lively's theorem suggest me or what, what, what should I say that Lively's theorem asserts that, asserts that, that a function, a function is holomorphic or uh, analytic or you can say regular, whatever words you may feel like, a function is holomorphic or you can say analytic 
a function that is holomorphic or analytic at every point at every point in extended complex plane must be a constant so what it turns out that except constant function even the entire functions entire functions like e raised to power z sin raised to power z all of these functions become singular at infinity by singular means they become non analytic at infinity so uh, just remember this particular fact that only one function remains holomorphic on the entire extended complex plane and that is constant Okay, so uh, subsequently I can write the very same statement as this implies what? This implies an entire function. Uh, entire function, one which is trivially, trivially not constant. Cannot be, cannot be analytic at, cannot be analytic at infinity. Okay. Okay. This is something that I just wanted to write. I have written it and you just have to remember it because see, you, I cannot go on deriving this particular thing. This is, these are all big things. Like these are again, uh, I, 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 I can, I can, uh, uh, I can have already stated my limitations regarding this, but understand my point. Only one, one function is such, which remains uh, holomorphic on the extended complex plane. That is your constant function. Apart from that, all these functions, I'm not saying this will become non-analytic uh, even and the finite complex plane. They are analytic in the finite complex plane. No issues about it. So for example, entire functions are analytic on the finite complex plane, but entire function except constant become non-analytic at infinity. This is what is my uh, thing that I'm stating. I hope uh, everybody got the point. If you don't understand please ask me. भरत को समझ पाया? Yes sir. है ना? तो mathematically तो समझ में आ गया पर physics में इसका analogous कैसा होगा मतलब? Yeah, that part I would I, मैं तुम्हें ना actually uh, जो complex analysis का जितना भी uh, portion है जो physics में लगेगा I will actually uh, separate it out and make you study. Don't worry about it. Right now we are just building blocks. अभी तुम समझो हम धीरे-धीरे we are trying to build the blocks. Okay? Uh, no doubt. Okay, yeah, iska physics mein kya hoga? I hardly, I hardly doubt. Like a Leibniz theorem thing directly into physics. I, I doubt ki kahi par bhi, uh, there would that would make certain sense. But yes, overall structures they would make sense. So abhi hum log dhire dhire will uh, go there. For example, agar main, agar I would get time. I would indeed get time, and I would try to uh, make you understand something called as analytic continuation. An analytic continuation, I would try to relate it to electrostatics, probably conformal mapping with lines and uh, streamlines. So there will be good amount of applications and complex analysis, which are directly related to physics, like directly means directly here. Like, for example, uh, you will find that in physics, you will be encountered upon by such functions. So you will be, you'll be seeing that whether the function is uh, uh, like analytic in, uh, or non-analytic or uh, I, probably I'll be able to explain you a little bit later. This is what, what is my uh, standpoint right now. Okay. So anybody else, any question, please go ahead. Because we are now reaching to a point uh, which is uh, very important. Singularities. Yes or no? Samaj mein hai baat? Yes, sir. So right away, I've already told you the functions, uh, analytic functions are those which depend upon Z and not depend over Z bar. So functions should not depend upon Z bar. If function is analytic, then it cannot depend upon Z bar. Yes or no? Up singularities can. Points where function ceases to be analytics. Points where function ceases to be analytic. Ceases matlab, uh, uh, stops. Matlab, does not remain analytic, ceases to be analytic. Maths wale, you, uh, maths wale bache, you cannot alone def depend on this particular uh, definition, but uh, uh, the people in physics may uh, uh, may depend upon this uh, like very 
dependable sort of definition. So points where function ceases to be analytic are is are called as singular points. Are called as singular points. Are singular points. Okay. Uh, let us have certain sense of discussion that we've left from. Uh, will anybody tell me uh, X is analytic or not? Is there anybody who can say that S X is analytic? By X, I would mean like, are you getting my point? This is X comma zero. So is X analytic? Anybody? No. X is not analytic. Anybody else has some different answer to what Bharat says? Monica, is X analytic? No, we are. You? So X is nothing but it is real part of Z and real part of Z is Z plus Z bar divided by So it depends over Z bar. Since it depends on Z bar, this is non-analytic. Okay. Just trying to make you revise all those things because I hardly have eight minutes in my hand. So that is why. Okay. Uh, Bharat would tell me uh, or anybody else also can tell me IOTA X minus Y. Is this analytic? Anybody else? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I mean, I just answer the question. Who is it? Who is it? Gopal. Okay. Anybody, any other question? No, sir. Why not? Why not? Iota Z. This is your Iota Z. Look at that. X plus Iota Y is your Z. This is your Z. This is your Z. This is your Iota Z. So, where is it depending on Z bar? It is depending on Iota, Iota X minus Y answer. Ah, yeah, Iota X minus Y. Then, so, Iota X minus Y, Iota Z. Where is Z bar dependence? Sir. Ah, beta, tell me. Iota X minus Y is Iota Z. Are you getting my point? It only depends on Z. Over Z, it has got nothing. Like I told you on the very first day, Z raised to power n. Kuch bhi constant lagao, se koi nahi pada. Z raised to power n is an analytic function where n belongs to natural. Yaad koi cheez bata diye. You can find in books, you will find derivation there also. I'm not interested in that because that will take a lot amount of our time. So remember alpha Z, iota Z is analytic. Yes or no? Ar bacho, jaldi yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. What is the domain of holomorphy? What will be the domain of holomorphy? The do domain of holomorphy will be in finite complex field. Abhi bhi bataya, there is ye to function kya hoga, simply z to ho iota z isko bhool jo, sab, isko kuch scalar lo. This is only z. Bula, only function which remains non-analytic, which means analytic at infinity is constant. So even entire function, this is an entire function. It has got no issues. Where is the difference? I have said that z raised to power n is analytic on entire complex plane, finite complex plane. So z raised to power n is an entire function. No issues about it. Since z raised to power n is an entire function, iota z is also an entire function. So dolo, uh, domain of holomorphy is mod z less than infinity. Yes or no? Should I go ahead? Okay, sir. अच्छा गिव मी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग अच्छा ये मैंने बताने से बोल दिया अच्छा एक छोटी चीज और लिख लो कौशी रिमान कंडीशंस आई हैव फॉर्गट टू डिक्टेट यू ऑल दिस थिंग्स जस्ट राइट ऑल दिस थिंग्स कौशी रिमान कंडीशंस इन पोलर टर्म्स या पोलर कोऑर्डिनेट्स सो यू मे वेरीफाइड समवेयर बट आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग इट राइट नाउ सो इफ आई हैव फंक्शन ऑफ z व्हिच इज डिफाइंड इन u plus iota v, where u and v are functions of r and theta. So you can as well as express these things in r and theta, yes or no? x or y ki jake r or theta may be express kiya sakta, kiya ja sakta hai. So del v upon del r is equals to minus 1 over r del u over del theta. Okay. And another one is, if I just get this place, bhool ke actually isle likh deta ho. And another one is del v by del theta is equals to r del u over del r. These two are conditions. These two conditions you can remember. I don't need to keep, you have to remember it. I don't want it to derive. Okay. Any issues about it? 
No, sir. So can you tell me, uh, can you tell me whether R is analytic? Whether R is analytic? So what is R? R is simply mod Z, isn't it? And mod Z is simply, if I write uh, mod Z, yes or no? Yes or no? G, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So if I write mod Z, or I can write it as mod Z whole square, any issues about it? And can I not write it as Z into Z bar? Again, depending upon Z bar. So any dependence on Z bar, you can straight away re reject it. I just stated these conditions so that you get somehow confused. I didn't have time in order to verify them. You can verify them at home. But my suggestion would be in any way, you should write your uh, function in Z and Z power. So that will make your life easy, at least exam wise also or otherwise also. Okay. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. What can you say about this particular function? E raised to per iota theta. Whether this is analytic or not. Not analytic. Why not analytic? So analytic over. Analytic over. I mean, anybody, any different answers? So it's independent of R. So you the derivative like, of R uh, will not. Analytic over. Analytic over. E ki risk for iota theta, I'm asking. Sir, how it will be analytic? No, no, I'm just asking. I'm not giving an answer to it. Okay, sir. And I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Okay. One two question on Liko because now time is almost about to over. So that you, uh, that we mean time, milta na. We join in karne ka. Tab tak tum is cheez ko dekh loge. But after that, I'll come back to all these things. Uh, just give me an answer to this. Uh, let's say. Uh, what should I say? Uh, just tell me whether this is analytic. So, these two questions up karo. I think I'm almost on the verge of closure of the time. So I will join you in the next meeting. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, as let's say. Okay. I think these two questions will be enough. So, to Koshigman se honge. Just to milk there. And uh, today we are only doing mathematics only from tomorrow or probably a day after we'll start with physics also. So I thought Wednesday would be the right day to start off with physics. Okay. So two days more because in the complex, we have to ask so at least we uh, have questions. Kar so this is what is my target. So uh, we're meeting after this. You just try to do these questions and then we'll uh, discuss similar points. Okay. I hope it is clear. If you have doubt, to, please push low. So we math class, right? Yes, math class. After that, we will have physics from Wednesday. So we will discuss what we will do with it. So I am thinking we should start with uh, electromagnetic theory. And more precisely, I am thinking, uh, because I have seen people uh, making a lot amount of mistakes in basics only. So I would uh, start the class in a recapitulation manner. Because I will start with some uh, recapitulation of concepts that you have had in standard 12. So I'll not straight away go to vector calculus because if vector calculus to start here, it will become three lectures of mathematics, two lectures of complex analysis, then one vector analysis. So initially I would do what in order to garner your interest, I will start with standard 12th level questions uh, because these questions usually come in examination also. So we'll start with basics and then we'll move on to some very advanced stuff. So this is what is my thought. Uh, you, you let me know yours after a while. I think it's now over. Okay. So we'll join back in the next meeting.